Hi there. In this particular video, or in the next series of videos, I'm going to help some of my grade 11 students and anybody else that's interested in watching on calculating strengths of solutions, namely in percent weight to volume and parts per million, molarity. And before I get into a lot of those, we're going to first do this one on moles and see how that one goes for now. So uh, to determine how strong a solution is, you need to know how much of the substance you're going to put in water and you don't measure how much, not normally by its weight, sometimes you're going to need to know how many moles are present and what a mole actually is. So we go to that link, we see a fancy picture of a mole, but that's not what we mean as a mole in chemistry. A mole in chemistry is a huge group of particles. When you talk about a pair, a pair of particles is two. A trio would be three, a quartet would be four, five might be a pentad, a dozen, everyone knows a dozen is 12. Not Many people may not be as aware that a score would be 20. All of that, though, doesn't help us figure out. But in chemistry, the mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Well, that is a very, very large number. Now, why, do you ask, would we have such a large number? And it's really because, I'm not really counting here, Wow, not even close. Might be one extra in there. Um, the reason you have such a huge number of particles is because particles and atoms are so vanishingly small that you need a huge group of them. So, looking at the magnitude of this number, if you had one mole of bicycles, it means you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 bicycles. Well, let's say we've got 6 billion people on the planet right now. That is a measly 6 times 10 to the 9. That means that each billion people would need not just a billion bicycles, because that would only take us to 18. They would need 100,000 billion bicycles to have one mole of bicycles on the planet. That gives you a feel for just how friggin' big that number is. Now, how can you figure out and convert mass of a substance into moles of the substance. The way you do that is you use your periodic table and they've already worked out the mass of one mole of everything. We call it the molar mass. Now depending on the, what type of your, peri what your periodic table looks like would vary what these, uh, where their position would be. The periodic table my students have, it's a number that's up here at the top. Uh, right hand corner and it lists off what it is in very hard to see here grams per mole that is how much grams each one mole of that substance would weigh or mass I guess we want to be technical about it so here's an image from that you can see the atomic mass in grams per mole 55.85 for each atom of iron now what formula there is a nice formula we can use to convert from moles into mass and molar mass and from one to the other. Now, we, every one of these words has an M in it, so we use N for number of moles, because it is just a number, right? It's how many dozens you have. This is how many moles of particles you have. The small M is going to be mass, and by the way the units are on the periodic table, that has to be in grams. And the molar mass, as you just add those numbers from the periodic table, will be in grams per mole. So you can take the mass and divide by molar mass, and that will give you a number of moles. Now, it's entirely possible that you'd have to rearrange that formula and move things around to answer questions. So if we take a look then at doing a couple of examples, we'll look at this example, determine the number of moles in 15.75 grams of aluminum chloride. So I look here that I have a mass of 15.75 grams and I'm dealing with aluminum chloride. To figure out the number of moles I would need to know the molar mass to get that done. So we need to know the molar mass of aluminum and we have three chlorines. So for aluminum we take a look it is 26.98 is its molar mass right there, hard to see of course, but you've got a periodic table I assume. So we have a 26.98 grams per mole and you have three chlorines, 35.45.
So we add all those up and see what we're going to get. So we take 26.98 plus 335.45s, and that gives us 133.33. grams per mole. So now to get N, the number of moles, we take mass and divide by the molar mass of the substance. Mass is 15.75 grams. Divide by the molar mass of 133.33 grams per mole. And we need to take and work that one out. So we have, wrong link, 15.75 divided by my previous answer would give us 0 0.1181. So 0 0.1181 would be our number of moles. That is contained in 15.75 grams of aluminum chloride. If you wanted to know how many particles that was, you would multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and that would give you an approximate number of how many atoms, or sorry, molecules of aluminum chloride would be there. So if we do a different example, just so we can rearrange the formula a bit, here if you had 13.5 moles of phosphoric acid, and we want to know what its mass is, how much does it weigh? So this number of moles, N, is 13.5. We would like to know the mass, and to do that, we need the molar mass phosphoric acid. Well, phosphoric acid, it's, its IUPAC name is hydrogen phosphate, and that's a whole different lesson. But if we have it as hydrogen phosphate, then we look up hydrogen is a plus one ion. Phosphate is PO4, and it is a minus three ion. In order to balance the charges, every molecule of hydrogen phosphate would be H3PO4. So now to get its molar mass, we need to have three hydrogens, which are 1.01 each. We have one phosphorus, and phosphorus is 30.97. And we would need four oxygens that are 16.00. So we will come back to our calculator, and we have 3.03 .03 plus 30.97 plus, uh, how many sixteens was that? Four sixteens gives us 98 grams per mole. Grams per mole. Knowing this now, we are looking for the mass. Our formula was N equals little m divided by big M, or mass divided by molar mass. To solve for mass, we will cross multiply, so to speak. Mass is number of moles times the molar mass, which would make sense. The grams per mole times moles would leave grams, right? So we have 13.5 moles times the mass of each mole that's there, 98.00 grams per mole, leaves us with, we will multiply our answer by 13.5, and we get 1,323 grams, which might be better to write it as 1.3 kilograms. So there is a very fast and abbreviated way of working these out, and if you watch for other videos, I will work on how to use that and calculate other things.